Hi everyone. Um, welcome uh, to our first uh, School Trip Community webinar um, on how to bring school trips into the classroom. Thank you all so much. Well, thank you all so much um, for joining. Just a quick thing to check. Um, I guess everything's working. Can you all hear me? Uh, if you put thumbs up and, and all that, brilliant, good. Um, fab. Uh, so yeah, thank you all so much for joining. I mean, it's an understatement to say how stressful and time consuming everything is at the moment. So I really do appreciate you taking the time out to join us. And um, I really hope you find this useful and um, you learn lots. Just a couple of bits of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, this is being recorded uh, just so um, we can send it out to people um, and other members that can join us. Um, so also feel free to write notes obviously throughout if you want, um, but it will be sent out tomorrow along with all the information and links that we talk about. You can enable your camera or not, it's up to you, um, but just if you are, just be conscious obviously of the environment around you and any background activity. Um, same goes for the microphone. Everyone's microphone will be muted throughout the main session uh, just to make sure uh, there's no kind of distractions. Um, the session will last for around half an hour until um, until half five. So I'm just um, admitting new people in. <laughs> um, so the session will last around half an hour until uh, half five. We've got some brilliant uh, people lined up as well uh, to speak. We have um, people from uh, National Museums Liverpool, the Council for Learning Outside the Classroom, and also up at the O2 to talk to you. Um, and I will also give a talk about kind of what the school trip community is and also how it can help you as well. We are going to have a Q&A session at the end, um, but throughout, if you do want to ask any questions, there is the chat feature. And um, if you haven't used Zoom before, uh, you just click the chat button at the bottom, it pops up uh, and you can write whatever you want. Please just know that everything you do write is public. Uh, so just be conscious of obviously what you write. Um, that's brilliant. I'm just going to admit a couple more people in and then we'll get properly started. Great. So, um, yes, yeah, so for those um, that don't know me or haven't spoken to me before, um, my name's Tom and I'm the founder of the School Trip community. I know we also have loads of new members uh, that have joined us for this webinar, which is brilliant. Um, so for those that haven't had a look at the site yet, uh, the School Trip community is a education hub to help you bring school trips into the classroom. We work with a wide range of theatres, museums, galleries, attractions all across the country um, sharing their unique educational offering. On the site, we have hundreds of teaching resources that include education packs, educational videos, uh, interactive games, worksheets, lesson plans, and more, all of which you can download and use for free. We have our new virtual section um, that we'll be talking about more later that has online exhibitions, uh, virtual tours, online performances, and other virtual sessions you can use to really bring that kind of school trip into the classroom. We share all the latest news, updates, um, and everything you need to know from arts and cultural venues. And then finally, and I guess most importantly, we are absolutely here to help. And um, it's why we created this webinar. But also, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to get in touch. Um, you can email me um, directly. Uh, there's my mobile number as well on my emails. And there's a chat feature on the site if you just want to get in touch with any questions at any time. We can offer um, ideas on kind of activities, help you find resources that are suitable for you, say on a certain topic or subject, and also with school trip ideas and virtual school trip ideas as well. So please do get in touch and um, more than happy to help. Um, brilliant. Um, the, as a quick um, actually poll, just to kind of now that everyone's kind of here, um, it'd be great to see. Um, so for those that haven't um, used it before, on the bottom banner of the application, it says reactions. Don't press it yet, but when you click on reactions, there's then a thumbs up button. Just as a quick poll, uh, to see where everyone's at and, uh, and all that. Click thumbs up if you usually, I guess in normal times, um, book school trips. So whether that's to museums, galleries, attractions, or abroad. So just get an idea of everyone and um, click the thumbs up button if you usually book school trips. That's great. I mean, pretty much everyone, that's brilliant. Um, they'll disappear automatically in 10 seconds. Um, and then the next one, just to kind of see where everyone's at, um, do a thumbs up again 
if you are currently booking or planning to book a physical school trip. So kind of, again, traditional kind of school trip, going to museum, gallery, attraction, offsite. So if you are planning anything like that offsite at the moment, put a thumbs up. A lot less, which, yeah, is what I thought. Um, I mean, it's brilliant that some people still have um, put a thumbs up and it's, it's brilliant to see that kind of some schools still can do those kind of traditional offsite school trips. But for so many, um, as you know, you know obviously everything's changed <laughs> um, and school trips are increasingly hard to do uh, to kind of traditional museums and galleries. That's why we created this webinar. Um, it's also, I guess, everything we do um, is there to make arts and culture as accessible to you as possible and school trips as accessible to you as possible. So we've created this to help you really bring school trips into the classroom and um, to help you where we can. Uh, a big part of that is we're going to have a new highlight each month. And this is a venue that's kind of shone to us as a real innovative new product. And um, what's been brilliant is through this time, and you may have used uh, some, that there's so many new activities, resources, educational videos, sessions, that arts and cultural venues have created to help you still connect with them. This month we have Turn Contemporary, um, which for those that don't know, is a art gallery in Margate. And uh, in usual times, a brilliant art gallery, um, great to the uh, kind of local schools and also kind of general um, Southeast. And to help support the recovery curriculum and to help support your students at this time, they created seven new uh, creative mindfulness resources. Now, for those that don't know uh, what creative mindfulness is, uh, it is it's kind of a form of meditation, um, but in a different way. So it's all to do with an activity. So the analogy usually goes of, and everyone's kind of had it where they've perhaps been cooking or coloring something in or playing Lego, whatever it may be. And the time has literally flown. Um, that in itself is a form of creative mindfulness. And what they've done is gathered these kind of activities together in these educational videos to that you can use in the classroom perhaps as a lesson starter or at the start at the end of the day to really kind of focus students um, and to help them um, with the, the subjects at hand it can be used in any subject um, but it does lend itself to kind of art and design type uh, subjects where you can use it as a creative prompt or to kind of prompt imagination in students as well all of them are absolutely free uh, to access. There's seven uh, educational videos and there's also an accompanying education pack that comes along with that as well. They're all on the site and I'll also put the link out tomorrow uh, just so you have that. Um, and it's a real example of kind of how something has you know, really adapted to the situation and created something new that you can still use to connect with them in you know, what is a very different way to what they usually would in their usual offering. At this point, um, I'd like to introduce another venue that has uh, really kind of done an innovative new um, kind of virtual sessions that I'd like to share with you. So it's so I'm going to introduce uh, John from the National Museums of Liverpool, and he's going to talk about um, his new virtual sessions that they've created. Okay, that's great. Thanks for, for the introduction, Tom, and it's really good to, to be here uh, with you all. Um, in Liverpool, basically what we decided to do is, knowing the challenges that schools are facing at the moment, uh, we decided to create um, what we're calling a virtual classroom. Um, we wanted to carry on giving um, schools access to our amazing collections and resources and to enable you to carry on meeting our expert learning staff. We started this off in response to the pandemic, but actually we're really pleased with how, how, it's, how it's developed and we're seeing it as a permanent part of our offer now really, um, because we recognise that it can help us to extend our reach and that we, we, we're, we're a big uh, museum service with seven venues and certainly our International Slavery Museum has an international appeal, so we see it as really important for that. Um, during the lockdown, when we started planning this, um, we actually did a survey of local teachers to make sure that what we're offering is grounded and uh, meets meets the, the needs. Um, but we also talked to the School Improvement Service in Liverpool and the, the Liverpool Cultural um, Education Partnership. And the outcome of all this was that we developed um, six workshops 
where essentially we adapted um, existing uh, workshops that schools came into our venues to do in the traditional way. Um, they're for pupils from key stage one to key stage three, but actually they're, they're mostly key stage two. Um, and I think when we were planning them, with the, the one thing that we were determined to hang on to was to keep them as interactive as we possibly can and have activities and look at them through different learning styles and so on. Um, so the workshops that we actually developed were Ancient Egypt and mar Marvelous Mummification, that's for Key Stage 2. Um, Impressionism, what's that, from our art galleries, which is for Key Stage 1 and 2. Ancient Greece, um, Gods and Heroes, um, that's sort of exploring some of the uh, myths from Ancient Greece and it's involving role play and um, then we've got from the International Slavery Museum, we've got under tra Understanding Transatlantic Slavery, which is really um, taking people, uh, helping people to understand what was involved um, in the forced migration from Africa to America. And it's looking at life on the plantations, but it's also looking at the legacies of transatlantic slavery and how that impacts on so many lives today. Um, um, Titanic, um, there, was, there was, as many of you will know, there was a, a strong link with Liverpool. Um, so we've done a, a workshop about, it's called Travelling Through Time, and it takes children with, through a series of activities, exploring class in Edwardian society, but really taking them on quite a dramatic narrative of what happened on that night in April um, 1912, um, when the Titanic sank. We've also got a workshop called The Amazing History of Liverpool. Again, another key stage two one, which takes you on a journey from the Ice Age to Liverpool's growth to a world port and taking in all the, the sort of the history of um, well, the football and, and the Beatles and all the rest of it and that, that amazing story of, of, of the famous city. Um, the workshops um, that we've developed cost £90 per class. And when you book a, a, a workshop, you get a package of resources and we particularly encourage you to do a pre-workshop activity which is about give, preparing children for the activity but enabling them to do some work that will enable them to really engage with the, with the activities of the workshop um, and then there is a follow-up a series of follow-up activities that you can do so each of these we've created designs so that they're as straightforward as possible there's a lesson plan and we provide the resources that are needed um, we're very sort of aware that the thing that children are going to miss out on is that experience of visiting the museum and gallery. So we've worked with a professional film company and we've got them working with our, our learning um, staff. And they've, for some of the sessions, not all of them, they created short films which just give um, children a flavour of what, what, what it's like in our galleries and our staff tell stories, particularly pitched at the, the appropriate key stage, they tell stories about the, the collections um, that are relevant to the workshop. Um, so the way we've done it is we're using um, the platform Microsoft Teams on which we'll deliver them. And we chose this because that's what our head of IIT um, advised us to do. You don't need to have the Microsoft app to use this we effectively just send you a link, you click on the link, and then you, you, you link up with our, our staff. And really all you need is um, a projector or an international, or, or, or a, a, a whiteboard um, and an up-to-date laptop um, with a microphone. Um, and we do a test call in advance of the workshop just to make sure there's good connectivity and everything works um, as well as possible. Um, this is where we're at at the moment, but you know, there's lots going on in the, in the world just now. And our next um, project is going to be to, to develop um, workshops for Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3. They're about helping children to understand all that's been going on in the, the issues behind uh, Black Lives Matter. So it's not ready yet, but that's the next project that we're going to be working on. Um, I think our staff, you know, were quite fed up when they were when they were furloughed and they were thrilled when we brought them back and they've really loved um, creating these new workshops. Um, so if you want to find out more, I'm going to hang around for the um, the uh, the Q&A session at the end 
um, and we'll make sure you get um, links to our website so that you can explore in more detail um, all of the, the, the workshops. And I should say, um, the final thing really is that, is that we've set up a new system um, so that you can book online. You just choose the date and the, the time that you want your workshop and then you can book it online. So that's a very quick overview, but I hope that helps. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, John. Um, that was really informative and actually really great to see that there's so many sessions that you've created and there's so much in the, the pipeline as well. It was just actually one quick question, and um, we will leave questions generally till the end, but just while we're on it, um, one of the teachers asked how many uh, students constitute a class? So how many people kind of per session? Is there a cap? Um, we, we basically work on, on, on a maximum class size of 32, but obviously if a class size is 33, you know, we'll work with you and, and make that happen. Brilliant. And, and yeah, Mandy's just asked as well whether we'll be sending all this information yet. So everything um, that we talk about today, um, I'll send in a follow-up email um, to you all tomorrow with all the links, information, um, and also kind of direct contacts as well. Um, so, um, so, yeah, brilliant. Okay, well, thank you so much, John. Um, that was brilliant. And, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, obviously John said he's going to wait um, around until the Q&A as well. And, um, yeah, we can ask more then. So, um I mean, the fact that you're all here and the fact that you all kind of gave the thumbs up to the, uh, yeah, have you booked a school trip before? I don't need to say the power of school trips to you, kind of, you know, if everyone looks at, back at their own um, time in school, everyone remembers a school trip. It's quite often the highlight of the year. For me, in kind of my anecdote one is when I was in year 11, um, I saw a play called uh, Disappearing Number at the Barbican Theatre in London uh, by a theatre company called Complicity. That uh, play inspired me to both do drama A level, uh, sorry, A level drama and A level maths. So, if a school trip can convince you to do A level maths and drama in one go, then they really are powerful. And to kind of talk about more about that and to kind of the current guidelines and everything around that, uh, we've got Justine from the uh, Learning, sorry, the Council for Learning Outside the Classroom. Now, the Council for Learning Outside the Classroom is the national body um, for learning outside the classroom we champion it we encourage um, and enable teachers to do more learning outside the classroom so we have free resources case studies examples training and what have you because we know uh, the biggest barrier for teachers taking learning beyond the classroom walls is confidence so we're here to help people take those next steps and uh, we do know that particularly around this time um, that confidence to take a bit of a, a, a battering you know people are unsure what they're allowed to do now with all the you know, guidelines that are in place to, to manage COVID and to ensure teachers and pupils are safe. So actually, um, I mean, it's been brilliant hearing about how the museums have been taking their learning into schools. That is just fantastic, making it much more accessible. It really does enrich and contextualise learning. But um, school visits, educational off-site visits are permitted. So you can do this, you can go off site, you can go out into your local community, you can go slightly further afield. Um, day visits are permitted. The um, advice from the Department of Education is at present schools are able to undertake COVID secure day visits within the UK. So overnight visits aren't permitted at the moment, but you can go off site. You can go to museums, galleries, farms, parks, theatres, if, um, if they're running particular learning, learning programmes. So really, I really, really wanted to, to emphasize that. I'm sorry, I've got all my email popping up there. And the benefit for learning outside the classroom and edu educational visits have never been more important than they are now. Um, what we've heard from teachers is that the way classrooms have to be set up to comply with COVID guidelines, you know, all um, deaths in a row with teach, um, people facing forward, it's actually reduced the opportunity for collaboration and teamwork. So once you take children away from that environment, they're able to mix better. So it actually enhances the opportunity for those collaborative skills. It rebuilds relationships. It gets people talking again to each other. It re-engages students with the subject matter that they're learning. And it helps to uh, help students to feel that life is normal again. And if you're used to doing particular trips or experiences at particular times, you know, those messages extend throughout the school so you know one brother will tell that one sister oh, we do that when you're when you're studying romans or when you're studying um 
ancient Greece, you do this, you go and visit this museum, you go and do this experience. And when they see that that's not happening, it just en enforces that sense of uncertainty that things are different. So being able to take your learning beyond the classroom wall reinforces that you know, things are normal, it's okay. Um, well, we do know that things aren't normal, but it does um, lead, lead to a bit of stability within the class. But we do understand that um, it is difficult knowing what you can do and what is available, what, um, how to take your learning beyond the classroom wall. And there's an awful lot of advice out there. National guidance, which is produced by the Outdoor Education Advisors Panel, they take um, what the Department for Education says. So CFE issues their edit. They, um, national guidance, the OEAP, take that guidance and they distill it down as to what it means for you as a teacher when you're planning either to take learning outside the classroom or undertake any off-site visit. So this, um, this is just an example of their home homepage. Um, but do go on there. That is updated constantly. It's a live, live working document. So anytime there are any changes, it's immediately updated. When all the new um, guidance coming out and uh, just as COVID was hitting, it was being updated, but you know, two, three, four, five times a day to make sure that whenever someone went in, they had a question, did they have the most up to date and the current advice? So go on that tells you about managing off site business. It tells you about what to consider when you're planning maybe to use a coach, for example, if you need to take um, transport to go somewhere. It tells you what to think about. We also, um, Council for Learning Outside the Classroom and the OEAP, we work very, very closely together. Together we produce a get outside guide and toolkit. So that will take you to the step by step things you need to consider during this time when you're taking, taking learning um, outside the classroom. How to keep you and your pupils safe and um, how to deliver your session effectively. It's a really good document, it's completely free. It's available on our website and on the OEAP website, so you can get it from either. And it's a step-by-step -step, um, uh, process to take you through, make, you, make sure that you're confident, and most important, that you feel confident when you're doing this. And there's a toolkit in there which will help you assess where you are now, where you'd like to be, and how to get there. Another thing to help give you confidence when you're going outside the classroom is to look for the LOTC Quality Badge. This is a national accreditation which recognises effective risk management and the quality of learning offered by that institution. Or organization. It's the only accreditation that's endorsed by the Department of Education who recommend um, in their guidance that schools, if you're planning off-site provision or using an external provider, look for a provider or a venue that has the LOTC quality badge because you can be assured that they have met certain standards with regard to risk management and quality of learning. And also since the um, whole COVID thing now, People um, who have the quality badge, organisations or um, individuals, they all have also checked that they have undergone a self-assessment that they are COVID secure. So if you um, have a look for any venues, you can look on the LOTC quality badge website and venues on there, um, organisations, locations um, that are on that website have the quality badge are also COVID secure as well. So there are two, way, two ways for you to get information and um, support to help you take your learning outside the classroom and ensure that your students are having as rich an experience, educational experience as possible. CLOTC also has a lot of resources on our website, as well as the Get Outside Toolkit. There's activity ideas, there are um, examples of how to plan, lead and evaluate your learning outside the classroom. We all know that that's very important that you show evidence of what you're doing is meeting your learning outcomes so there's a lot of free free resources on our website too and um if you join if you become a member of CLOTC you get a further resources such as curriculum link lesson plans free webinars to help you understand what other schools are doing um share best practice see what providers are doing it's a bit like this but you can share examples and best practice of what people are doing so that's just our website and I will too hang around if you have any questions. Um, I know there's an awful lot to get through there, but I just wanted you to, to be reassured that there's information up there. You can go off site if you wish. It's perfectly okay to do that. Um, great to have um, providers coming in either virtually or in real life to your venue as well. 
and what we want to do is really to make sure that students get the very most they can from their education experience. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> and yeah, with um, with that and everything else, um, I will um, put it in the email tomorrow with all the links um, and also the contact details as well. Um, so you can take advantage of everything that they have. Um, that site is uh, genuinely really useful um, and I really would recommend um, having a look. It, um, like we said, it's completely up to date all the time. Um, so it's a really kind of great resource to always check. And now in that kind of you know, positive note of uh, looking to the future and uh, kind of the people that are uh, kind of bringing schools uh, back to their venues, we're going to have Dan from Up at the O2 to talk about their new COVID secure um, sessions as a real great example of things you can do moving forward. Hi, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, good evening, everyone. I won't take up too much of your time, um, so I know we're all busy. But, um, yeah, as Tom said, uh, I work for Up at the O2. And um, for those that haven't seen it, um, we are kind of with the walk where it goes over the top of the O2. We are kind of like the Sydney Harbour Bridge climb just without the constant blue skies and blue water, but we are and we are London's own version of it. We opened up in 2012. Uh, we've been going for eight years with a small break this year. Um, and you may have seen us on areas such as uh, EastEnders or TOWIE or Strictly. So there's a good variety there, so I won't judge anyone who's uh, seen us on TV from there. Um, we were doing really, really well. We had a record-breaking year in 2019, and then sadly on March the 16th, we closed um, to the world. Um, and 110 days later, we reopened. As an attraction, we were able to open on July the 4th, and we did open on July the 4th. The main reason for that, and the main reason for wanting to kind of talk about what we do now, is that we are an outdoor attraction, or at least 80% of our attraction is, is outdoor. That's probably our biggest selling point. It was why we wanted to go day one, and it was an area where people were confident to go out from day one. So that was our chance to actually finally take advantage uh, compared to the busy world and competition that we normally face out there. So when we opened up, again, to get our good to go measure, just like we were talking about there with your kind of confidence levels, we had to go through a lot of, of changes. But for us, the actual attraction itself, experience hasn't changed at all. So we haven't actually diluted our product. What we've just done is we've just made the process safer and in compliant. So things like um, capacities have been reduced, um, which for school groups isn't normally been the problem because we normally work on that one to 12, one to 15 ratio. Um, from there. But for public, we, we've gone from uh, numbers such as 30 down to 10, down to 14, which is currently what we're working at the moment. We've created booking zones so that when you arrive, you sit in your own um, benches rather than just in a shared area. So you kind of create that zone. And as you move from area to area indoors, you're in your own zone the whole time. Uh, so there's no mixing. We have equipment that you share for safety reasons, but that's all sprayed. Um, it's actually sprayed with equipment that lasts for 28 days, but we do it every day just to ensure that. And where we used to offer out clothing as extra layers, especially in winter, we have stopped that, but we obviously encourage people to wear more appropriate clothing. However, we are still looking at being able to add that for people on colder days, people that turn up uh, inappropriately dressed for shorts and it suddenly starts raining or it's cold out there. So we are looking at still being able to return that as quickly as possible, but in a COVID secure way. And um, screens up for our staff, PPE available at all times and sanitation stations in four places around our route. So again, before any major touch points, we've been able to do that. And that's how we've been able to get up and running really early. And over summer this year, we actually managed to get about 50% of our usual numbers through the door, which compared to London sites is, a, is quite a good number to go from as well. So the reason obviously I wanted to talk today as well is to say not only are sites becoming COVID secure, um, we've actually started to think about what we could offer people going forward and that's where the educational product is. We've offered education at the, up at the O2 for eight years but really all we did was offer the same product just for a cheaper price. Um, what we've now decided to do is keep the cheaper price of course for you um, but we've actually added in educational um, reasoning to go on our climb. So we've actually developed um, over the last six months and working with people like Tom uh, to ensure that we have things like key stage two and key stage three levels of geography um, and STEM, which is currently what we've got out. This includes um, some really interesting activities. So when you get to be on the roof, you get about 15, 20 minutes on the roof. So rather than just going up there, taking your pictures and moving on to the school trips, we can add in things like challenge cards. So up to 20 different challenge cards, so groups can have competitions or just um, small groups uh, filling in and getting answers about local geography and history of the area. We also have key stage four for business as well, for anyone that looks after slightly older ones. We have a kind of dragon's den 
a style challenge that we can do with groups. But ultimately what we off actually offer now is, is pre, during and post learning resources. So we can give you those um, lesson plans, we can give you the activities to do with us and we can actually help post as well. I've done things such as uh, schools presenting to me ideas as well. So what we just wanted to let you know is that we're evolving both for COVID secure, but also to show you that uh, sites like us are safe. We're outdoors. It's great to get that fresh air. It's a great chance to get people back together again. And for those that haven't visited the O2 in the last couple of years, it's slightly changed. Um, we now have a full on shopping center inside it, an outlet village. Um, I would say we have a cinema, but sadly it is a cine world. So it's on temporary uh, closure for um, the next couple of months. We have 30 bars and restaurants. We have a trampoline park. And of course, we're just a, a few minutes away from cable carts across the river um, and Greenwich downtown as well. So for those that do trips to this area, hopefully we can kind of add to people's experiences of coming in and doing a full day out um, and free coach parking at the O2 as well. Um, it's always been something that we've offered at the O2. So um, I'll, I'll hang around for Q&A Q &A as well and we'll send over some more information. But yeah, there are a lot of sites out there, especially like ours, who are ready for your visit and just hope that the confidence can return to come and visit us. That's great. Thank you so much, Dan. And and yeah, it really is that that kind of um, you know, the confidence come back. And it's great to hear venues like yours that have done all of the, I guess, the due diligence and the safety measures and um, to really welcome schools back again um, in a really kind of COVID secure way and your new educational sessions as well um, to kind of help um, with that. So so that kind of is the end of the, I guess, the official main bit of the session. Um, I really hope you found it useful. Um, if it's the first time that you've kind of engaged with the school trip community, um, welcome, and um, welcome to all our new members. Um, and if you are kind of one of our one of our oldies, then <laughs> welcome back to you as well. And um, we will be running these on a round kind of monthly or kind of half-termly basis um, to kind of keep track of what's, what's new and um, have sessions like this. I will be sending out the email tomorrow with all the links and information and um, that I guess is a general theme of all of this. If there is anything that um, we can do to help, if you have any questions, need advice, looking for anything in particular, please do get in touch. And um, more than happy to kind of send over ideas um, and help you in that way. Um, if also you're looking for any particular kind of sessions like this um, or any particular topics that you'd um, love to hear more information about, uh, do let me know and um, because we can um, kind of find uh, different speakers for that as well. So. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to either put them in the chat feature um, or um, you can raise your hand and I will unmute you. And for those that haven't um, used kind of the raise your hand feature before, on the bottom of the, kind of the Zoom application, there'll be three dots and it'll say more. If you press that, there then should be an option that says raise your hand. Unfortunately, it sometimes does depend on kind of software to software, but that's where it should be. <laughs> um, if not, just put something in the chat. Um, so uh, the first question um, that I've got from Sophie is for John. Uh, did the IT head provide reasoning for Teams over Zoom uh, or even other platforms? And have you found any schools have blocked Teams access or Zoom access? So I'm just gonna unmute John again, uh, if you wanna take that. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's it, it's a good question. I mean, I'm not that technical myself, so I'll do my best to answer this. Um, the our, our head he did advise that um, Teams was was he felt that that was the safest platform. But you know, we're aware that Zoom, if if it's used properly, is completely safe as well. Um, we thought we'll try and make it work with Teams first, and the feedback that we've had so far, and that we are at a piloting stage where where we're testing out. Um, but very shortly we'll be going totally live with it and you can book your workshops now, I should say. Um, but um, we, we haven't encountered so far any problems with using um, Teams at all, really. That's great. Um, and um, while we have you, uh, we have another question on, um, can you tell me which workshops are designed for Key Stage 3? Yeah, that's an easy one. Um, it's the Understanding Transatlantic Slavery that's for Key Stage 3. And that, because of the nature of the subject matter there, and it, it, it you know, does deal with traumatic things, really, uh, we, we feel that, um, that that we need to stick to that. But what, what I'd say is that, um, you know, all our staff have had special training in, in dealing with that, the sensitive issues involved there. Um, but we recognise the need to do something for younger children, particularly at the moment. And that, as I said, that's the next thing that we'll be working on. Brilliant. Um, from Mandy, um, 
sorry. Oh yeah, John, sorry. Thank you so much. <laughs> sorry. Uh, this uh, next question is from Mandy. Um, do uh, we have links to theatres in order to screen into classrooms, um, additionally concert venues uh, such as Royal Albert Hall? Uh, yes, we do. Um, so the school trip community works with school trip venues in kind of all their forms across the country, um, including theatres and musicals and plays. Uh, the only unfortunate thing <laughs> is because so many theatres still don't have a start date, um, and we're talking more, I guess, West End theatres, or some kind of regional venues um, and touring venues across the country. Um, there's not, unfortunately, too much there um, for, I guess, school trips. Um, but we certainly do work with people like the National Theatre, uh, Old Vic, Young Vic, um, Bristol Old Vic, Chish Festival Theatre, Sheffield Theatres, Galore, kind of across the country. Um, and uh, all that kind of stuff is on the site. Um, the resources at the moment, um, to be honest, are quite West End heavy, uh, so London heavy but they can be used obviously across, um, across anywhere. Uh, we are in more conversations with theatres across the UK of kind of streaming into schools. Um, and actually next week we are creating kind of the ultimate guide um, into kind of virtual theatre trips, um, which I'll share with you. Um, and uh, that will kind of feature all of the people that still have online performances, but then also um, platforms like the National Theatre's Collection, where your school can sign up to access a past catalogue of their plays, musicals, and that come with accompanying resources as well. Um, this next question is for Dan um, from Up the O2. Uh, can you tell me what the costs are per student? I'm just going to unmute Dan. Uh, yeah, um, it does vary. Um, what time of the like the week and, and the day we come, but we've actually kept our cheapest price for, for term time uh, during the week to encourage bookings. Um, we normally just charge to the students and it's about 10 to 15 pound cheaper than the public price. So I believe it starts about 22, 23 pound per child, but we actually offer the teachers uh, free places. So again, whether that free places, then the discount is, is passed on to an average of all the school children or whether the school would like to bring the teachers free of charge, that's absolutely fine. And as long as you don't go over the capacity number, any additional teachers are added um, free of charge as well. So really we're looking at about 22, 23 pound per child. And that also includes a video, a, a photo package at the end. So the digital pictures that we've taken of your group um, or a printed photo at the end that you can take away and put in the class. That's great, thank you, Dan. Um, we've got a, I guess more of a comment from Sophie, uh, which is brilliant, um, about the British Museum's new suite of virtual visits. Um, yeah, they're brilliant and actually um, we've, uh, our most recent post actually on the news section is about them. Um, so those that haven't seen them, uh, the British Museum um, through a partnership with Samsung um, have created a whole host of virtual, uh, vi virtual visits and virtual sessions. They link to, um, I think it's Key Stage 2 and 3 off the top of my head, but it might just be Key Stage 2 um, into a couple of different subjects and uh, they are actually a brilliant way um, to obviously still connect with the British Museum and they've also just expanded um, their places uh, to accept more students so they can now book up to 900 uh, students or 33 sessions per week so there's kind of lots of room um, and if you haven't already I, I would recommend looking at it. Um, I think we've kind of come to the end of the questions unless anyone has any other questions or um, I can't see anyone with their hands raised Give a quick moment in case anyone does want to quickly write something or oh oh sorry Catherine just put a hand up. Mm. Hi Catherine. Ca oh Catherine, sorry. Is it Catherine? Catherine, just Catherine. Oh, <laughs> um I was just I'm just um interested um if I know there was one person who said they were booking a virtual school trip and um sort of how they're what what the policy is of their school because with my senior leadership team they're very strict and um i don't think i'd be able to persuade them to to go on a school trip i don't know um if yeah just i'm just interested in why they were able to book it i know it's legal and i know you've all been been promoting it and i actually agree i'd i think it'd be so good to go on one but i think the problem is senior leadership teams yeah, and it's actually something that, um, so at the start of term, um, I don't know if you saw it, but we 
um, kind of we sent out a, a quick poll or survey um, to our teacher network and asked, you know, are you currently planning and all that? And the sign off from SLT was also one of the biggest problems um, because obviously we all know the power of school trips and I'm sure they do too. But yeah, with all the kind of paperwork and risk assessments that usually come with school trips in the best of times, and then obviously this is an added thing. Um, I'm going to quickly pass over to Justine from the Council of Learning Side of the Classroom, just in case there's anything she wants to add on kind of any tips. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, completely understand, and that is that is very very similar across many schools. Um, so just by um, by having the resources, by um, sharing the the information that I, I shared with you today, so the national guidance, the um, Get Outside toolkit. And also talking, every region has an outdoor education advisor. So if you go onto the OEAP website, that's the real, there are real people behind that. And there's one for every region in the UK. I think there's about 150 of them. So you will have one for your region. Um, and you can find out who it is and you can call them up and have a conversation. And they can, you know, talk to your SLT. They could do a little um, um, uh, twilight session about taking learning outside the classroom in the current climate. There, you know, our webinars also um, show how learning can be delivered in different ways so that you can talk to your OEAP and they will support you and help you. They are there to, to encourage more learning outside the classroom. You can utilise our resources and share those with your senior leadership team. But also um, talk to the provider if you're thinking of going, for example, to a museum. I mean, there are examples of museums that are coming to you virtually, but there are also lots of providers who have changed their way of operating. And they will come onto your site as well and they will run um i saw one just yesterday that they will run history sessions on your site about um field hospitals so they will bring kit to you um or museum learning boxes they, they will bring learning boxes to you and you can utilize those so you know, have it do talk to the people you know if you're thinking of visiting a certain you know, museum or venue or provider do talk to them about what, what they can do they'll work with you and also the either educational visits advisor or outdoor education advisor they've got sometimes got slightly different names they'll also be there to support you so um we do appreciate it. it's a very difficult time at the moment but there are still ways that we can bring the subject to life for your students that's great and it is good to know and um, and actually the there are so many kind of you know, loan boxes and kind of the people that um, when you get kind of a package into the um, classroom there are brilliant ways to still connect and so many people are doing that um, and actually I forgot to add on and um, when Mandy asked about the theatres and um, we're actually having conversations with uh, people like Birmingham theatres and also the Little Angel Theatre in uh, London I don't know if you're uh, primary but they're doing special um, key stage two performances where they're actually coming into the school and um, so it's kind of the usual performance they would do at the Little Angel Theatre um, in Angel um, in London, uh, but they're bringing it kind of into the classroom and also streaming it as well. So, so I kind of lots of different options, but, um, but yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, I think the website like the Council for Learning Outside the Classroom, I would, would look and show kind of SLT that, um, yeah, and kind of encourage to do that. Um, and uh, from Catherine, um, I'm a deputy head and have been encouraging teachers to take children outside the classroom. We live near the forest and um, that doesn't sound, sound so yet. I'll put it more of a comment. That's great. That's great, Catherine, that um, kind of, you know, that, that you still want, want to do that and actually that you are. Um, and yeah, uh, and I think actually on that positive note, let's, let's leave it at the positive note of, you know, people are yeah, going to- that, That's brilliant to hear and do, 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 do it. But it, 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 is, it is fine and the more, the more you do little local visits and then you'll build up to getting on a coach, a minibus, and then you get on a coach and it just, you know, you'll get more familiar with what you need to do. So little step, you're not expecting, you know, to organise you know, big, long, big expeditions right now. Just little step incrementally, develop your practice, develop your experience, rebuild your confidence and um, yes, it will all, it all works. That's brilliant, yeah. Fab. Okay, well, um, I'll close the kind of questions there. Um, thank you all so much again for joining. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to kind of have you here. Um, I know how obviously time constrained everything is, so really do appreciate you joining. I will be sending out everything tomorrow um, just so you have all the links and information. But if you kind of in the meantime have any questions or um, just generally, please do get in touch. Uh, you can email me, call me, or there's the chat feature on the site as well. 
thanks so much for joining and um yeah i'd see you at another session very soon see you later